An important last step of restoration is to monitor and evaluate the results. Since the major goal of restoration is to obtain a healthy eelgrass meadow that will produce ecosystem services for a long time, it's important to evaluate if you have reached these goals. In this video, we will take you through the major steps of this part of the restoration process. Many of the important ecosystem functions that natural eelgrass beds provide, such as long-term storage of nutrients and carbon, are not fully obtained until 10 years or longer after restoration when the meadow has reached a higher shoot density. It is therefore recommended that restored eelgrass beds should be monitored and evaluated for at least 10 years. One of the key variables to monitor in a restored eelgrass bed is the aerial extent of the meadow. This is most easily done using a drone. We are using drones to monitor the development of the transplantation from the, from the air. Here we see a series of photos of a 10 by 10 meter test planting area taken after one month, three months and 12 months after planting. By using reference markers of known sizes, the aerial extent of eelgrass beds can easily be estimated. It is also important to monitor the quality of the eelgrass bed. We recommend to use non-destructive variables such as shoot density and leaf morphology, which are also fast to collect. Here we see a snorkeler that is measuring shoot density and leaf morphology in a newly restored bed. The size of the sampling square should be adjusted to the density of the shoots so that approximately 10 to 30 shoots are counted in each square. The size of the square therefore needs to decrease as the shoot density increases. The morphological variables we recommend to monitor are leaf length, leaf width and number of leaves per shoot. The advantage of using these variables is that they are easy to measure without damaging any shoots. To count the number of leaves accurately, the diver needs to separate the leaves with the fingers. The number of leaves per shoot reflects the health of the shoot, where less than 4 leaves is an indication of stressed plants. The combination of the aerial extent of the bed and the growth and health of shoots provide good information of how the restored meadow is developing. One, when we fly the drone, we can take images of the cover and the spread of the plants, but then when we go to the water, we can take count of the number of shoots and see the density of the plants. The first two years after planting, we recommend that more extensive measurements are taken of the growth. So at the end of the first and the second growth season, we recommend that you carefully harvest a few of your transplants to measure the growth of the whole individual. And by counting the number of side shoots and measuring the biomass of these harvested plants, you get a good estimate of the growth, which can be used to predict the expansion of the planted meadow. The aerial extent and quality of the restored eelgrass meadow are measured annually for the first four years. A more extensive monitoring and evaluation is done after five and ten years. At these times, the ecosystem functions of the planted meadow are also evaluated. The function as a habitat for fish and large invertebrates are assessed using visual counts along line transects. Sediment samples are also taken to assess the accumulation of carbon and nutrients in the meadow. To take into account that natural meadows can be dynamic and change in size and quality between years, the results should be compared with reference meadows that are monitored in the same way. A summary of all the important steps in monitoring of restored eelgrass meadows is found in Fact Sheet 6.2 in the handbook. A summary of how the results should be evaluated is found in 6.2.